Yes, I'll sing of your love forever. Sing of your love forever. I'll sing of your love forever. And of your faithfulness. Will your faithfulness. Oh, your faithfulness. Sing of your love forever. So sing of your love forever. So sing of your love forever. I'll sing of your love forever. If you faithfulness. Faithful, oh, your faithfulness, oh, your Sing of your love forever. Sing of your love forever. Sing of your love forever. So sing of your love forever. Of your faith. Oh, your faithfulness. Oh, your faithfulness. Oh, your faithfulness. Oh, your faithfulness. Oh, what faithfulness. Sing 
forever I'll sing of your love forever Oh, of this perfect love Oh, this perfect love Oh, a perfect love A perfect love I'll sing of your love Sing of your love I sing of your love forever. I sing of your love. Oh, the depths of your love, oh Lord, that you gave your all for me, that you paid it all for me at Calvary. What extravagant, perfect love. Oh, what perfect love. What perfect love you gave. So whoever will I sing forever. Sing of your love 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 forever. Ah, joy sing.
Jesus, we worship you, Lord Jesus. 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 Worthy of all praise. Be our glory, 
Consecrate my life. Consecrated, totally committed unto you. <laughs> Woo! Commit my soul <laughs> into your presence, into your glory. I consecrate my life. Consecrate, totally committed. Consecrated, totally committed. Consecrated, totally committed. Into your presence, into your love, I commit my soul. Into your presence, oh God, into your door, totally committed. Into your presence, into your glory, totally consecrated. for me and he 
ever lives for me, ever lives. I commit my soul to you. Hallelujah. <laughs> into your presence, into your glory, totally consecrated. Hello, heaven. I take no hell, no things. I love heaven and the righteousness. Totally committed. <laughs> I love heaven. Don't want hell, no things. I love heaven and his righteousness, totally committed. <laughs> I love heaven. I don't want any hell, no thing. I love heaven. I won't take nothing else. Hallelujah. I love heaven and the realms of his righteousness. Totally consecrated. You know, I'm as ha ha ha. I'm so happy. I love, you know, I love going to church and feeling heaven. <laughs> people say, well, I don't believe in loving God send anybody to hell. You know, people send themselves to hell. And there's a witness of it every day. People make wrong choices. They make choices to get upset at somebody and then they live in torment. You know what I'm saying? Especially relationships of husband, wife. They argued with one another. They didn't have to do that. They could just humble themselves and blessed each other and been happy. Instead of living all sour and bad and unhappy for hours, maybe even days. I want heaven. Won't take no hell, no thing. <laughs> you know, it's beautiful living in heaven. I'm living in heaven. I'm li we living in heaven. I'm not, are you either, it's heaven or hell. <laughs> I mean, come on. Into your presence, oh God, I commit my soul. You know, if you would do that, your spirit, your affections, your feelings, your attitudes, your appetites, the disposition of your being, becomes so sensitive to things that are not of God. Everything will begin to change in your life because you want it to, not because you have to. Think about it. You begin to live in heaven, live in this joy, live in this peace, live in this glory, live in this fellowship. Whoo! And now you turn off the television, not because you have to, because you don't, because you want to. Now you don't go to certain places, not because you can't or you're restricted from you, but because your heart's not even in it. You don't even want to be there. I'll take heaven. I don't want hell. Nothing. It's a choice everybody makes. You get to you choose all the time. You're going to be happy, you're going to be sad. Sad hell. Happy heaven. It's true. The Lord said, I write these things unto you that your joy may be full. 
but you have to be willing to recognize that it's obedience and doing it that your joy is going to be full. I'm giving you this information, the Lord's saying, so you can live a happy life. I'm telling you these things so you can have days of heaven upon the earth. People just, people just go their own way and say, well, I just don't agree with God. Well, you know, you agree with you. And how's that working out? You know, you agree with you. You agree with you and a couple maybe that, I don't know, maybe a lot of people agree with themselves. They can't get anybody else to, you know, even agree with them. I'm going to go with Father. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. He said, I'm telling you these things so that you can have days of heaven upon earth. In the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 11, you had the opportunity in the Old Testament before all this glory came to live days of heaven upon earth. Thank you, Jesus. Say, God, God is my perfecter, my protector, and my provider. His name is Christ Jesus. He's highly exalted. Above every, name, above every name, above every power, above every, power, above every, authority, above every authority, nothing can impose itself upon me. Nothing can impose itself upon me. My perfecter, my protector, my, protector, my, provider, my provider has made a way, made a way for, me to continually for me to continually live in this glory, in this glory of His presence. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> ah, if you can't get happy about that, you know, just come on. If you can't get happy of that, about that, you're living in a prison of doubt and unbelief. And, and the good news is that we're not here to beat you up and condemn you. We're here to set you free so you can get out of your prison. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody said, it's hot in here. Well, you ought to be right now in the Middle East. <laughs> Egypt's about 114, right out towards Minyan right now. And uh, so it's kind of cool. It's only about 95 in here. You can be seated. <laughs> you know, when it gets up to 95, 100, 105, every degree is a whole nother level of torment. You know, it is. It really is. Especially when you've been dancing around, sweating. Hallelujah. That's right, you'll dry off quick. One person said, Pastor's taking another bath for Jesus. <laughs> you get to take a, a bath for Jesus too. Just worshiping him, loving him. You guys are going to sit there and listen to me preach. I'm going to stand here and do it. I'm going to put a whole lot more effort into doing this than you are going to hearing and receiving. I'm going to spoon feed you the Word of God. And I, you know what? I'm, Jesus said, when he told, he told Peter, he says, well, he told the disciples, he said, sit down here, I'm going to wash you guys' feet, which is just absolutely unthinkable. It's unthinkable. Because you, not even the lowest Jewish slave could, you know, be so humiliated, so cast down as to be a foot washer. So you had to go get a Gentile slave to do that job. And here Jesus says he's going to do this. You know, we're not talking about trim toenails, nothing manicured. We're not talking about, right for, you know, just freshly washed up. You know, we're not talking about that at all. We're not talking about paved roads here, you know, getting from the, going from the car to the church building. We're talking about rugged, dirty, you know, uh, feet that has dirt ingrained into the pores of it. And Peter said, you're not washing my feet. Jesus said, what I'm doing now, you don't understand, but later you'll get it. He said, you're not washing my feet. He said, well, if I don't wash your feet, then you have no part with me. He's like, okay, not just my feet only, but my hands and my head. You know, he said, get the, <laughs> he's just ringing the pendulum. Everybody always wanting to do it their own way. Just calm down, your feet's good enough. Just start with your feet. That's all it takes. God, he's, the, the Lord is so amazing. What I do now, you, won't, you don't understand, but you will later. And he's talking about what happens when you get a nature change. When you begin to allow the Holy Ghost to develop you. I know that a lot of people come to Jesus and they've got a change of nature. 
but they never allowed God the Holy Ghost to develop them and teach them how to live in it and walk in it. And so they lived their life as carnal. They lived their life as mere men. And so it's almost as though they've not even been redeemed. God opened up heaven and people said, I'm going to live over here on earth. And then always disqualifying all the things that God said that we could have. Saying, well, it's not true. I prayed and my uncle Joe, he was the holiest person I ever knew. He prayed, nothing happened. No. No, that's not the way it works. God is not a liar. Your uncle Joe may be, you may be, but God ain't. Okay. Huh? God is faithful concerning all of his promise. He watches over his word to perform it. The bottom line of it is, is you and I have to be willing to be conformed to his word. We've got to agree with him. A lot of people just want to do it their own way. Father wants to teach us how to live an amazing life. You've got to quit being so high on yourself. We're going to get you sobered up. You've got to quit being high on yourself. Where every little thing insults you, offends you, causes you concern. Huh? If you just don't agree with it, you just believe you're so brilliant that somehow... You know, it's all got to line up with your intellect. My goodness. Hello. Humility is a wonderful realm of pl and place in which you and I get to fellowship with God. Father has made a way for us to know him. You know, when you read it, when you read in, <clears throat> in Matthew chapter 7, verse 23, I don't want to get into this too quick. I'm going to back up for just a minute. I'm just back up here. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy you're here. Praise God. Last week, we were, last week, where were we? Last week, where were we? Uh, we were, we were in, um, we were in Aberdeen, Washington. And uh, an amazing, amazing week. I think there was people from like 13 countries or something like that there in different places all over the United States. And just saw the power of God sweep the place. We were just so blessed by Debbie and her husband is pastor for many years. We were actually in a church, one of the three churches that he built, huge churches, you know, beautiful. It was just a blessing to be there with them and fire of God fell, power of God fell. People got set free, refreshed, encouraged, awakened. And last Sunday we were actually in, in another church that, actually, that Debbie, the, the, church, the primary church that Debbie and her husband pastors there in Aberdeen. And we missed you. We totally missed you. I was so blessed, though, that what Sandy, um, James and Sandy did and getting themselves put together to do an outreach in Escondido. That's what it's about. If I could just, if we could just pray through to see the Lord raise up laborers to go in the harvest. And then I, you know, you might, it might be weeping. And I mean, I know it's, I know it's challenging and it's hard and it's sacrifice. But this is what God's called us to do. He's called us to lose our life. You can be a mother and lose your life to live out the life of Jesus and raise prophets and prophetesses in your house. Hmm? You can be a business person, lose your life to take and everything that you're making in the, in the realm of finances, you're just putting into the kingdom so the gospel can be preached. Hallelujah. We don't have to rely upon philanthropists. We could rely upon people of faith. Wouldn't that be an amazing event? An amazing thing. Everybody started moving in the wonderful realm of what it means to lose your life. Jesus said, if you lose your life, you can have my life. As long as you hang on to your life, you're not going to have my life. And we don't get the raw reality of that. But, you know, what I was beginning to talk about a few minutes ago, hedges on it, hedges on it. Learn how to wash people's feet. When I was growing up, we did that. We had foot washing services. And that is, it's kind of foreign to the church now. You think, you did what? Yeah, we did foot washing services. Used to be believed that it was almost as important as communion. That's lost to the church. Many things are lost to the church. Um, we revivalists, I'm a revivalist. I believe in grabbing a hold of the things that God has said. I think, you know, that probably the greatest expression of lawless, lawlessness and iniquity is to pervert God's word in his name. And I want to make sure that my life doesn't look like that. Because people, they're always concerned about orthodoxy, what's coming out of the mouth. I'm interested in orthopraxy. So is the Lord. What's coming out of your life? What are you doing with your life? 
It's really, really very, very important for us to recognize people always walking around in suspicion. That's demonic, by the way. God the Holy Ghost isn't suspicious. He's not threatened. He doesn't live under fear. People that are suspicious, they're always looking for something, you know, that's going to attack them. Spook that's going to come out from underneath the, you know, the bed or whatever that's going to get them by surprise. Uh, suspicious. Oh, could be a false prophet. I wouldn't worry too much about that. I probably think that you're doing a good job on your own. <laughs> Constantly declaring things over your life that are false, not the Word of God. Constantly speaking out things that God had nothing to do with. Cursing yourself. Huh? Shaming yourself. I pray in Jesus' name you'll just start living by the Word, speaking the Word. Understand that it's the entrance into heaven. The Word, Christ Jesus, is the entrance and the only way. There is no other way. He's it. He is the only true and living God. There, he's it. He's the entrance into heaven. He is the living word that expresses the word, the written word, huh? that is to us the ability to understand our right choices so that we may, may remain there. That is heaven. And so if you just start prophesying the good things of God over your life, oh, things will get good. Praise God. You wonder what we're doing. Well, what we're doing is to wear you out, exhaust you, threaten you, mess you up if you're fully in a human realm. We're, we believe strongly in the local church and building the local church and trying to encourage people to get the job done, to get busy, to get at the work. I believe that if uh, everybody would get a, a bumper sticker, put on it, taxi cab to heaven. Go and get your magnetic, magnetic, magnetic sign, whatever. Really consecrate your vehicle to God instead of pretend. All that I have is God's and for your service. I don't know. I wouldn't want the Lord rolling his eyes at me. Are you with me? <laughs> he said, all these service I see you do, well, that is for yourself. I don't want him doing that. Tax cab to heaven. I believe if everybody in God's kingdom, in the churches of the United States of America, would devote themselves to going and picking up people who had no right to church, who wanted to come to church. The churches would be jam-packed. Everybody would have to have a new building program. But nobody wants to do that. You know why? It cost them. It cost them time. It cost them money. It cost them their life. Ooh. ooh. rut row. Or they say in Japan, oh, really? Yes. It cost you your life. Does that sting just a little bit? Here, let me give you a little more salt. Let me be salty to you. Somebody else said that stings. Thank you. That means I'm being salt. Hallelujah. Salt in an open womb. Just think about it. Think about it. what you started. All of a sudden, you got out of the perspective that goes beyond what God's called you to do, and you got into the reality of what's there at hand. You know, and the Lord said, you know, he said, Lord, I want to go for you. I want to be used by you. He says, what's in your hand? What's in the framework of what you can do right now? What resource do you have right now that you can make available to the king? Do you have a boat? Why don't you make it available to him? He'll preach out of it, and then he'll take you out into the deep and go fishing. And <laughs> fill it up for you. Amen. He's a rewarder of those who participate with him. Amen. Amen. Seek him. Cooperate with him. Wouldn't that be amazing? The world would be changed. The nation would be changed. If one person, if every one of God's people, if there really are approximately 750 million Holy Ghost filled believers, 750 million on the earth, it only take each believer eight people. They all have to reach eight people. Change the whole world. Win the whole world. Are you with me? Whole worlds. One. Eight people. Your responsibility, eight souls. See, what happens is we get, in this, we get in this frame of reference to think that it's beyond what I can do. God's asking you to do what you have in your hand, what you have. He's not going to hold you accountable for what you couldn't do, which was beyond your reach. He's going to hold you accountable for what you could have done, which is in your reach. And if you're going to run with people like me, you're going to strain. You're going to strain. Because we believe in building the local church. We believe in, in planting churches, building other churches. Right now, we're building a church in Oregon, the building, the building itself. Um, now, we, we have to have a measly little $46,000 by the, next week. And I'm sure you can participate in that if you'd strain. 
Some of you are. Praise God for that. You say, well, you know, I, I just don't think that that's what I'm supposed to do. Well, then you need to find what you need to do, what you're supposed to be doing. Behold, you're sitting here. If you were over there, you need to participate with what they're doing in the kingdom. In the local church is building the local church. It's teaching people to observe what God has commanded for us to go and do these things. I'm telling you right now, you get faithful with God, and he's going to promote you to do some wonderful, great things. Somebody said, oh, I can't do that. I got too much money to spend on myself. <laughs> that's the problem. I got all this building, that building, the other building, the other. That's the problem. I'm just going to tell you right now, you're never going to really able, truly be able to receive until you break the alabaster box. And then continue to understand how to break the alabaster box. Huh? Cause think about it. This may be your last chance. It was, it was Mary, the sister of Lazarus, the last chance. She didn't know what was really going on with Jesus when he was there visiting her the last, really the last two days before he was crucified. She didn't know that. Think about it. Think about it. Oh, Lord, I meant to. I was saving it up to pour out on you. I, didn't, I thought you, I was going to plan on doing it next week when it was your birthday. He's not here next week. Today is the day. People have got to understand, it's not your convenient giving that is going to break you into a realm of reception from all that Father wants to flood your heart with because he understands there's a spiritual law where your heart is, that's where your treasure is too. And the Lord's not a waitress that you give him a tip. Are you listening to me? I've seen over and again where people are more excited about giving to the restaurant for the food that they gave and they gave more than giving in the church where they received spiritual food. They felt like, oh man, this is really a burden here. I mean, all I got was spiritual food out of this. <laughs> and I gave a whole 20 bucks in the offering. Where can you eat for 20 bucks? Your whole family. Huh? Huh? Your heart. The Father's going to communicate with your heart. He wants to see you and I just start giving everything over to Him in the kingdom. We, you know, we're just, we're committed to the local church. We're committed to planting church, building churches. We're committed to evangelism. I won't be here next Sunday morning because I'll be in New England, Connecticut. And, you know, I, I get excited about it because the more I'm not around, the stronger the anointing is on Joshua. <laughs> and the stronger anointing is going to be on you. I, wonder, I, I, sat and, I sat and listened to Kelly Leger preach the other day and said, because he, he did one of the morning meetings at the conference that I was at, I'm going, it's beautiful. <laughs> they said he's Pastor Mark Jr. I said, no, 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 no. no. I said, it's public domain. He said, well, you can say whatever you want. He preaches just like you. The reality of it is he's bringing the word. He's just bringing, standing there, quoting the word after the word, talking about God's love, his righteousness, his empowerment, his goodness. It was wonderful, wasn't it, baby? It was amazing. I'm going, uh, you see what Paulina, uh, Paulina and, uh, and Angelo, I'm sorry, Angelo, I, I know your name, are doing. I mean, I just, I just want to see, I want to see as many people as I possibly can influence to go do the work of the ministry. Amen. Just sitting around wondering when they're going to get a pat on the back. You can't be high on yourself, man. Oh, I just need somebody to tell me that they love me again. Listen, don't be so insecure. I, need to, I just need somebody to tell me I'm doing a good job. Don't be so insecure. Just leave that for Papa. He's going to build up one big event. He's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into this eternal glory. <laughs> if you need the praises of men, you're, something's wrong with your heart. Something's wrong with your heart. What's wrong in your heart is you ain't surrendered. You haven't given it all over. Start giving it. Start giving it. Somebody said, well, huh. A man of God told me, he said, see this building? I just, I, I gave it. I just gave it. He says, say, the Lord gave me the money and I get big, beautiful church, big, beautiful, beautiful. I said, it's beautiful. I said, as mama said, you can't outgive God. He was a 70 year old plus preacher. He says, you're right. You can't outgive God. It just keeps coming bigger. What happens is people won't take the risk. They won't take the risk of their life to go and across the street and be threatened to be rejected and not liked in the neighborhood to tell somebody, listen, I want you to come to church. I'm interested in your soul. 
Your eternal soul is very important to me. You've got to understand, I believe without any question that you must call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ or you're going to spend an eternity in a lost state. Because so it's wrong with the heart. You know, I was talking to my wife the other day and I just said, baby, we have got, you know, we're, we're, our goal is to get to a place where we can put 99% of the finances that we receive into the kingdom. We're, we're moving that way. You know, the first goal was that you have to get to 51%. There's a lot of people that they've never even thought of that. You mean there could actually have a goal to get to 51%, but if you, if you lock it into what you're getting right now, you're like, wow, I can't survive on that. No, we're not talking about what you can do. We're talking about ultimately what you, a miracle realm that you give yourself into. Yeah, to where that living off of 49% is living better than you're living right now in terms of taking care of, you know, powder, you know, powder. My, you know. My pew, my couch, take care of everything for myself. Just lavish upon the self. Oh, what happens when we begin to take our put as riches and our precious things and lavish it upon Jesus? Our heart is now opened up to a whole other realm. If you take Mary, she did it not because she was wanting her heart to be open to another realm. She did it because here is, he raised my brother from the dead. She was so thankful. Remember what she was saying? Lord, if you'd just been here, if you'd just been here. Now he's, she's sitting in a situation, he's raised my brother from the dead. See, the thankfulness. See, it's a wonderful thing when all of a sudden you move out of doing things because you have to and you get into doing things because you want to. It's because it's in your heart, because you love it. You love his presence. You love his goodness. You love his ways. You love what he's done for you. You're so thankful. You're so grateful. Huh? And we're not trying to wring, you know, some kind of water out of a dry rag. <laughs> Nothing's coming out. Just squeeze harder. So, you know, one the most important thing to us isn't just isn't just doing a local church. It's doing a local church that's baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire and wanting to bring people along to cooperate with that who love His presence. What, I mean, whew, if the church can't manifest the presence of God, where on earth are you going to see the presence of God? If you can't have happy, joy, excitement, rejoicing, the flow of heaven here, we're on our way to heaven. In fact, I'm living in heaven today. You're not happy. There's no witness in the earth. The ministry of Jesus doesn't exist unless it exists in you and me. Heaven doesn't, isn't revealed unless it's revealed in us. And you're not going to have him and being, holding on to yourself and holding on to your life and being stingy with your stuff. And when you, you know, somebody said, is your treasure really in heaven? Ask your checkbook. <laughs> Ask your checkbook. Do some math. Simple math. And, and, you know, people want to say, I, I give 10%, barely, off the net. Should I give off the grocery net? People just ask me, should I give off the grocery net? I said, look, I'm not even going to answer that question. Should I give off the gross of the net? Why don't you just give the gross net? Why don't you just give it all? When you got to ask that, why don't you get past yourself? Because we're living in the New Testament. Hallelujah. It goes cheerfully. Cheerfully, because you purposed it in your heart. Father, I'll bless you even if you're stingy. You give a small offering, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to give you a small harvest. The small harvest is something. It's a multiplication. Huh? He I'm, I'm so blessed. I've been getting a small harvest for such a long time. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and get past yourself? Why don't you go move into the realms of glory and start being like 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and chapter 9 where people lived, they impoverished themselves to give in the kingdom. Somebody started losing their own life and said, you know what, I'm not going to hang on to this. I'm going give to give it in the kingdom. And then, over and again, we've, saw, we've seen where people, they've either got to get a brick with their name on it or they've got to get a plaque of accomplishment. 
in order to get behind the things of the kingdom. It's just high on yourself. What is in it for me? When you're asking that question, you're not there yet. You need to agonizomai, agonize to enter in. You're not there yet. You're not in yet. You're not in. You're not in. Somebody says, oh, you got to pay to get in? No, but when you're in, you'll pay. You'll give. And you'll have to give generously and delightfully because you understand it's a fellowship, it's a communion. You can't out and give God, and it isn't a mode about giving God. It's just, Lord, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build an altar. My altar is going to be a living sacrifice. That is fundamentally in everything that I am and everything that I possess and every opportunity you give me. Father, you're going to find it. It's going to be turned into a fire offering before thee. I'm going to tell you right now, you ought to develop a fire offering for you too. You can't out give God. You can't out sacrifice God. You listening to me? I, you know, I praise the Lord for those of you who, there's a couple of you who said, okay, I'm going to sacrificially give on a monthly basis for the building of the church in Oregon. That's beautiful. I'm so glad that some of you have put God on your bill account. Blessed silence. <laughs> Or not so blessed silence. I'm so glad that some of you have made God one of your bill statements. Because look at this stack. Who's that for? Look at that pile of bill statements. And just think for a minute. Because you guys are thinkers. Think for a minute. Who is that for? How big is Papa's stack? You know, it's because it's worse than one for you, one for me, one for you, one for me. Huh? One for you, 20 for me. <laughs> what a relationship. Hey, listen, I'm coming into a partnership relationship with you. We're going to just go all the way together. What's mine is yours. What's yours is mine. Here's 20 for me, one for you. You're going to get upset a little bit. You're going to go, what? What? Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, you're so with me. <laughs> you, you in unseen realm. People, God's called you. God called you to greatness. He's called you to labor in the kingdom. And, and if, don't let doubt and unbelief, don't let self-interest steal that which Papa has purposed to give you. Listen, we not only, we're not only doing, we're not only, we're not only believing the local church, building local church, building local church, developing people that are going to be able to function, flow in the ministry, not in any ministry, but the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Signs, wonders, demonstration of the power to preach the word the way God ordained it, to have a disposition where you smile most of the time, I know the world has put a big, huge oppression upon you. It's a weight. It's gravity. But we're going to, you know, I'm telling you right now, we're going to see God do some work in your life to the way that you can smile. We've devoted to building churches, planting churches. We've devoted to evangelism. We've devoted to world missions. You know, right now we have two crusades on the docket. Both of them are going to cost over $100,000. Somebody says, we're behind you, Pastor. We're behind you. Yes, so far behind us. <laughs> we can't see you. Not when we're writing the check. <laughs> we can't feel you when we're like going, I need somebody to pray with over here. Well, where's a hand? Then we just, but that's what we've got to do. That's what we've got to do. We, you know, we get to get ourselves, we get ourselves so far out there in the kingdom of God that only signs, wonders, and miracles will work. Then you get signs, wonders, and miracles all day long. Then you get to be happy all day long. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, I'm going to just take a vow of poverty. Why don't you go ahead and take a vow of poverty to take all that you are able to do and all the Father will bless you with and put it on the kingdom. Instead so of take a vow of poverty, a vow of poverty that one people, most people want to take is one to be just lazy. <laughs> just lazy, don't have any responsibility, they don't have to, you know, really get up and do anything, have to put their faith to work. They just want to basically put on sackcloth and walk around like a holy person. <laughs> Why don't you take a vow of poverty and go ahead and make wealth for the kingdom? Because God wants to do that through you. But he ain't going to do it through you if you don't know how to give because all you do is make wealth. You know, it'll be 20 for you, one for God. Are you listening to me? It happens when you've got a dollar. If there's anything people, God's people got to learn how to do, is they don't appear before God with a tip. And they don't just appear before God, you know. You with me? With what's convenient for them. And then worse, don't appear before God empty-handed. Well, I didn't come with anything today. When you need to take your shoes off, put your shoes, your stinky shoes in the offering basket then. Walk home barefooted. 
Huh? We'll wash them up and find somebody to give them to. <laughs> give something. Give something, but you got to do it with the right heart. Because you just purposed it in your heart to be used by God. I'm, I'm so blessed that God has anointed me to preach, to lay hands on the sick and they recover. To see demons go out of people. We saw such a powerful manifestation of the Spirit of the Lord deliver people. Hard, hard people. Sobbing, couldn't catch their breath. Embarrassed, they're sobbing so hard. <coughs> Gasping for air. Grown men under the Holy Ghost conviction. We're so blessed to do that. We've labored to do that. Not everybody's there in that development in the Spirit yet. It's okay, you can support us. We'll go for you. We'll go on your behalf. We'll do it for you. Father set, this, set the thing up like that. Isn't that good? Amen. That's good. Well, I'm just not sure. But I'm going to tell you right now. If you're not so sure, you need to get sure. He would say, well, I'm not sure they're doing the right thing with the money. Guess what? It doesn't matter what they do with the money. It's how you give the money. Amen. Father's not holding you responsible with what they do with the money. Amen. That's just another lie of Satan. Just basically able to work in the realm of people's thoughts to keep them from participating with God. You get the reward from heaven, is, it, it doesn't matter if it was 100% just what Jesus would do with the money or if it was 100% what the devil would do with the money. It doesn't matter. It doesn't impend upon you. Somebody said, well, I'm not reaping a great harvest. I must be sowing in the wrong field. That's nonsense. <laughs> you're sowing in the wrong field based on your heart. Yeah, yeah. What you're sowing in the wrong field means that you just were giving out of a wrong motive. It had nothing to do with who you were giving to because in that sense, because you were given, you, if you're in the right heart, you're given to the kingdom. You're given Christ Jesus. These things are important. Because if, you know, everybody get all thrilled and excited when we start talking about, we're, you know, building the local church. We're doing church plants. We're, you know, we're doing evangelism to the churches throughout the United States of America. We're doing missions. Praise God. Well, we're involved in an exciting church. Yeah, but you're going to have to be exciting with it. Amen. You need to be exciting with it. You need this hallelujah. Don't, you know, people say, well, we're just going to leave it to the pastors and the ministers, their vision. Fine, we'll get your vision and let's go with it. Go with it. We'll support you. Go start your church tomorrow. Whatever it is, go to the mission field tomorrow. We'll support you. See how much it's going to cost you. See how much sleep you're going to miss out on. Go. We want you to. Honestly, I'm not kidding. We want you to. Huh? Understand, Father is holding our, us, each and every one of us, responsible for each and the lost. But if we're all walking around doing it because we have to rather than we want to, we're going to be a sorry group of people reaching a group, looking, a sorry group of people in terms of how we look, reaching lost, because we all bummed out. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you like to live fully for Jesus? Yes. You just go ahead and commit your soul. Take out your, breathe out your last breath into your presence. I commit my spirit. I commit my soul. And then to say, okay, now everything I have, shirt on my back, everything that I have, my, my energy, my time, all that I am, I'm throwing it here into the kingdom. Here we go. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why I've never, I've never put up a sign that said, here's the top five givers. Because then it becomes, you know, becomes competition, false motives. And say, oh, wow, there's our name. Look at my name. I'm... You know, the guy who gave the most is very happy the name's posted. The guy who gave the least is going, my goodness, I'm ashamed. So-and-so gave $12,000. I gave 12 bucks. But, I, you know, that's the wrong motive. That's the wrong motive. Between you and Jesus. Between you and the Lord. Because you delight to bless Him. You know, because it all comes out. It's all publicly known, made known. Because you start giving sacrificially. You start giving with total abandonment. I'm going to tell you right now. Here's what it is. And, I'm going to, and you've got to normalize this. Show me the people that worship the most radically. I'll show you the people that give the most radical. 
Show me the people that are giving the most radical and worshiping the most radical. I'll show you the people who are increasing the anointing most radically. It's just the way it is. You're not going to worship radically when you don't know how to give radically because it's always connected in the scripture with total abandonment given. And if you normalize it, I found it over and again, the person that's making $10,000, normal. Uh, if you normalize that, they may be giving such a much smaller offering, but they're giving almost 40 to 50% of their living. Whereas the person who makes, so just raw dollars, it doesn't even matter. Are you listening to me? Somebody's making $200,000 a year and they give the $10,000 in church. Well, compared to the person that only made the $10,000, you know what I'm saying? It, it looks like, wow, they're giving so much more. But, but no, 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 look at that person. Look at that person who in secret is giving 40 to 50% of what their earnings. Look at them, look at them. Look at the lavish worship in their life. Look at the increase in anointing. See, it's made manifest for anybody who looks after it, it looks after it in the right perspective. It's made manifest. You can't hide anything. What you do in secret is revealed openly if you know how to look. And you know, we're not, do, we're not doing these things for the compliment of men, but we're just talking about the evidence of what, because these people sit around and go, why is it that I can't have? Why it is that you can't have us? Because you can't give. Because you can't believe. Because you can't cooperate. Why don't you just, you get past can't as soon as you fall in love with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As soon as you get into a fellowship and a relationship where this is sweet to my soul, sweet to my soul, so sweet, so sweet, so sweet to my soul. I love that song, huh? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Okay, you can quit playing now. We've finished with the offering message. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, that's, it's good, it's good, it's blessed. I'm blessed. I want you to be able to just come. <laughs> Got to, got to soothe the situation. <laughs> no, I pray in the name of Jesus, it's not so. Somebody said, well, I abandonedly give. How many years ago? <laughs> because it's about today. It's about, it's about a flow of heaven. It's about a supply of the spirit. It's about, listen, I, you know, I want to be involved in the great things of the kingdom of God. That is good. Here we are. We're giving you an opportunity. Be involved. Go ahead, some of you today, when you're giving, go ahead and go in debt for the kingdom. I want you to go in debt for the kingdom. And don't, don't give me all the excuses and don't tell me the why nots. Just go in debt for the kingdom. And if you can't go in debt for the kingdom, then you need to talk to Father about that. You need to ask him why. You need to just have a conversation. I'm going to leave it between you and him. I'm going to leave it between you and him. Hallelujah. Because we're just, you know, we're, we, right now, I believe this is a time, like never before, to start doing mass evangelism crusades in the United States of America. And, you know, we're going we're we're to see God build that momentum. As we go to the local churches and see signs and wonders and miracles, we're going to see Father build that momentum. As we see people go out into the streets, just everyday life. And you, you take responsible for everybody who's tormented, sick, and unhappy. Huh? You're going to, you're going to, you're going to, have, you're going to learn, first and foremost, that you've got to have Pentecost every day in order to be able to meet that up, you know, to meet that responsibility. Huh? Because you, you can't walk towards them tormented. They'll be scared to death and run and hide. You know what I'm saying? You've got to walk before them. It's like, wow. You know, it's like Michaela said, I have really learned the secret of evangelism in Klamath Falls. I said, what is it? She says, walk around with a smile on your face. Everybody wants to know, why are you so happy? What an opportunity. You know, can you just imagine? I bet you that would work in San Diego. I mean, if you just walk, you just walk into the store, if you begin to say, I'm going to become a part of a spectacle. Here's a person who just got out of dialysis or just got out of the hospital or they're hobbling around or they're feeling in pain or they're in a wheelchair. I mean, I'm going to make a spectacle. Listen, I want to pray for you right now because I believe it's the will of God to heal you. I want to pray in Jesus' name right now. If they say no, say, why not? <laughs> I mean, just make a spectacle out of God because that's ultimately going to create the momentum. That, the Word of God will break through the barrier. See, we're just under, we're just basically too many of us are afflicted and tormented and under the harassment of demonic spirits because we've held on to our own life and thus we don't speak out. We're not willing to become a spectacle. We hide in the shadows and just look for some type of an opportunity where we can do something for Jesus and not rock the boat. 
I'm going to rock the boat big time. I want you to stand up and start shaking that thing around. <laughs> Freak everybody out. <laughs> well, otherwise, you just, just get out of the boat and start walking on the water, walking around the boat, talking to the people that are in the boat about their fear and their concern and their worry. Let's just go ahead and get this job done. Because until we're doing it, we do it in mass, it's going to be ultimately ridiculed, cast down, hidden, eclipsed by all the rest of the stuff. But the magnitude of the solidarity of the church doing the ministry of Jesus would be unstoppable. Amen. It would be unstoppable. And it'd be a louder voice than any voice that is heard in the United States of America. Look at what the voices of the minority are doing right now. Special interest groups. Look at what they're doing because they're bold. They're passionate. They're determined. They shouldn't be ashamed. They should be so embarrassed and so ashamed of themselves for the things that they are championing. But yet they are so bold and they're so de determined. And look at what they've done while well, the church sits silent. Why? They didn't give in the offering. And when they gave, it was a tip. It was what they were, it was convenient to them, wasn't it? It wasn't their treasure. You have to ask yourself, did I ever give God my treasure? Did I ever give God my treasure? It's where your treasure is, there where your heart is. Also, and because be, I, I watch people all the time, they deceive, you will deceive yourself. Yeah. Satan will throw in on that and he'll deceive you. You back away and you start thinking rationally. Think about somebody else. You're always far more objective in your thinking when you're putting it on somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I says where your treasure is, there's where your heart will be also. And the treasure that we have in this fellowship with them, it's not a treasure that we have in going and doing all these things in the kingdom and having all this ambition. Oh, no, we're going to conquer the world without this, with zero ambition. Amen. Because it's not us that does the work, it's him. I've discovered that more that I get out of the way in terms of having some kind of responsibility for the work or for the results or for the miracle, the more God's able to do because it's him doing the work. We strain like a tree trying to bear fruit. Ain't nothing going to happen. You just got to back up and relax and let God be in control because he's the one who commands in the hinds calf. Hallelujah. He's the one who speaks in the trees. Produce. Living the life of Jesus, just living it out in Him. Yeah. That's what God's called us to do. I want to liberate you. I want to liberate you. Brought proclamation of liberation here today. Yes. Hallelujah. I want to liberate you. Get you ready for the kingdom? Get you ready for heaven? Yes. By going ahead and committing yourself to living in the kingdom and living in heaven, not living for yourself and about yourself. Yes. Huh. Hallelujah. Wear yourself out. Go ahead and wear yourself out for the kingdom of God. It may start just in you serving at home, learning how to wash the feet of your spouse. Serving at home, learning how to wash the feet of your children. And serving in the local ministry, learning how to wash the feet of the saints. Those are the ones counted in the number. Huh? Those who've washed the feet of the saints, who serve the saints. Hallelujah. 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 I'm Borostea. What can a little old lady that's 84 years old do anyways? She can go ahead and continue to lose her life. How? She might give of her two mites, which is 100% of her living. It was all that she had. Whew. Wow. One thing it is, people, you and I are going to have to get an awareness that Father sees and beholds. Huh? He's not Santa Claus. <laughs> Checking the list. He's here. He's, he beholds. He stands over the offering basket. The Lord stands over the offering basket. He tries the heart. He stands over the offering basket. He looks at you. He looks in the offering basket. He looks at you again. Next. Because he knows what, he knows what he's empowered you to do, what he's purposed for you to do. And he's waiting for you to cooperate with him. And that so describes me. So you make it about money. No, it just is a declaration of where your heart's at. It's a declaration of your servitude. It's a direct declaration of how you wash the feet, how you serve the ministry, how you serve the church, how you serve those who are anointed of God. You connect. I'm going to tell you right now, if we can teach people to connect, then you will develop. 
And when you develop in God, there will be a great door, effectual door open unto you in every dimension. People don't connect. Most people don't develop because they don't connect. They just don't connect. So we want to teach you how to give. Give of your life. Give of your being. Give of yourself. Not because you have to or by constraint, but because you love it. He died for me. I'm, what am I going to do? What's my response? He loved me. What's my response? Thanks. High five. Cool. Appreciate it. I mean, come on. <laughs> It is horrible. It is horrible. I'm afraid that it's too much of the orthopraxy. I'm afraid it says, draw an eye with my mouth, but my heart's still not in it yet. God loves you. Christ Jesus loves you. Holy Ghost loves you. He pleads with us day in, day out. I want you to open your Bible to Matthew 7, 23, because I now feel released. Go ahead and give you this. Hallelujah. Hatahariha. You know, it, I, love, I love Matthew 7, 21 through 23 because it really causes us all to take pause and wait a minute and say, hold, hold up. Because the, the Lord here really expresses in a, in a radical way. It's not so much about the display of the power that is in your life because that could be of various different causes and results. It's about the display of the fellowship in your life. The fellowship with the Father. He makes Matthew 5, Matthew 6, and Matthew 7. He lays out one of the great monologues of the Scripture, describing to us what it looks like to have fellowship with the Father, to participate with His love and with His character. It's just like the, the other great... I mean, if you just would learn Matthew 5, 6, and 7, give yourself to doing it, you'll find out real quickly how much you're in need of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> uh, you won't get out of chapter 5. He said, I'm consecrated to live in the Word now. Okay, let's start with Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Because you're going to find out how much you need the Holy Ghost and depend upon the Holy Spirit and how you're going to have to deal with yourself on the level of denying, not dying. Dying, no problem. Huh? Somebody said, I'm not afraid of getting killed. I'm afraid of getting hurt. <laughs> I don't want to be injured, crippled, blind, chopped off hand or leg. You're going to get hurt denying yourself. Huh? Deny, not die. Deny. I know they sound kind of similar. Especially if it's a person from the South. You can't hardly tell the difference. <laughs> to deny yourself. You can understand, wait a minute. I'm championing my cause. The Word of God will show you what you're doing wrong. It's a light into our path that shows us where we won't serve God, where we're not willing. And then we make excuses and write, I'll write it off like somehow it don't count. It don't matter. It's not that important. Jesus loves me. Yeah, He loves you, but your only proper response to that fellowship and that love is to obey Him. That's the only legitimate response. That's why if you go over to John chapter 13, John 14, John 15, John 16, John 17, which is the longest monologue of Jesus in the Bible. It's where he just pointed out. He said, I'd like to sit down and talk with Jesus. Sit down with him. John 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Then read it again. Then read it again. Then read it again. Then memorize it. Because now you've got to slow down memorizing. And you've got to think about it more. Go, whoa, there's that word. You can skip over that word if you're not memorizing it. You know what I'm saying? It's true. Sit, you want to sit down and talk with Jesus? Sit down and talk with them. Listen to what he's got to say. And then suddenly he began to take it to heart. Go, wait a minute here. Hello, I've been running through all these various different ideas and scenarios. Wait a minute. Now he's talking to me. He said, I want to show you how to walk with me. And he makes, you know, if you think about it, Father makes his will. Christ Jesus makes doing the will of the Father, doing the will of God, superior to all things and it's his word that reveals his will he says in verse 21 he said you never did the will of the father you can go all the way to first john 2 17 and you can discover in john first first john 2 17 the the world and the lust thereof will pass away but he that does the will of god abides forever it's not hard 
You can see all the lust, all that goes on in sin and iniquity, all that goes on in this world, all that goes on in really which self-interest feeds into is a, recipient, a, a, a willing recipient of is opposed to the will of the Father, the will of God. We say in, the, we say in, in this prayer that Jesus taught the disciples to pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed or sacred is your name. Thy kingdom come, your will be done. The will of the Father is superior to all the things. Jesus said, I've come to do, to do your will. I delight to do your will. That's got to be the transition where it's not a legalism, I've got to do the will of God, where people are fixated on all the don'ts. But suddenly you become captivated by all the do's, empowered to live his life, empowered to be seated in the heavenly realm, empowered to be blessed with all spiritual blessings, empowered to receive this wonderful protection of God, the Holy Ghost and fire, empowered to be blessed, empowered to increase. Empowered to have communion, empowered to be, have God supply all your riches, all of his riches, huh, to you. Everybody wants that. Everybody wants Philippians chapter 4. Those are the Macedonians. Are you listening to me? Yes. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But wait, go back and look at what they were doing. Those are the second Corinthians chapter Eight people who impoverished themselves. Oh, we don't want to think about that. Forget it. We just want to talk about this one. Wait, wait, wait. That applies to the context of the Macedonians, of the Philipp, those of Philippi, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, who gave themselves, their whole, their whole task wasn't taking care of all their bills and all of the stuff. So I said, I'm just focused on paying off my house. <laughs> Before the 30 yard note is due, because I'm getting old. What are you gonna do then? You have now taught yourself your whole life how to focus your whole life on you. Are you somehow gonna break free from that? No, you're training yourself how to live spiritually. Every act, everything that you give to your, yourself to, you're training your spirit how to behave. You, by your own will based upon either the doctrines of men, the ideas of men, the culture, the concepts, or based upon the doctrine of God and what he's to come to bring to us with his word and with his Holy Ghost. You're constantly making decisions. Many of our decisions are made based upon the social pressures of our culture. And it's training your spirit wrong. It's training your behavior wrong. And you're going to get wrong results all the way down the line. And all you're going to do is be a good old Joe religious person. And if you're going to be that, you need to go ahead and run the race with the Haradith because they're living more religiously holy than most than any religious Christian. You hear me? Yeah. You're in the wrong club. <laughs> Father's not interested in all of that anyways. He, he wants a circumcised heart. Amen. He doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, all this stuff doesn't matter whether you're, whether you're circumcised in the natural or not circumcised in the natural. He's not interested in that. He's in a circumcised heart, a new creation, a new creature, someone who from the heart, he desires truth in the inner parts. And the inner parts, he should make us to know his way, yeah. to say, Lord, I believe who you are. I'll take everything. I, I believe you so much. I'll take everything that I have in my bank account and everything I'm going to use to pay the bills. I'm going to pay your bills. Amen. And I know you'll take care of mine. Most people will go up, go up on that and say, somehow you're shirking your responsibilities and your commitments. Nonsense. You have elevated your, your commitments and responsibilities to men above that of God. And you've trained yourself to do so. And you've trained yourself to behave in such a way. How are you ever going to break free from that? Because you live under a yoke of deception and bondage that has taken a hold of the way you process and think logically. You have to start just, you're going to with total aband abandonment say, I'm going to obey God. I'm going to start living by the word. No matter what it costs me, I'm going to risk everything. <laughs> a friend of mine was telling me the other day, he said, yeah, he said, you know, because he'd spent some time in prison, wonderful Holy Ghost man, a man right now, serves the Lord, spends some time in prison. He said, yeah, since some people lied on me and they have a phrase in prison, they turned the green light on me so anybody could take me down. And he had heard all the rumors and heard all the talks and it was just incredible, crazy stuff. And he knew that when he walked through this one particular door to go into this place in the prison, that that's where he was going to get beat up, maybe even lose his life. And he thought, well, there's the guards. He could turn himself over to the guards and say what's going on, because everybody knew the guards knew. 
He grabbed a hold of the handle of the door and he says, God, I've been preaching about you. I've been telling people about who you are and now I've got to prove you. I've got to find out if you're the God that I've been telling everybody about. And he opened up the door and he walked in. Oh my, I love that. Because somebody's going to prove God. Because somebody's going to take the risk. Because somebody's going to get out of self-preservation and self-protection. And somebody, somewhere, sometime, is going to say, I'm going to see if God, is God, if God is the God I've declared him to be. If God is the God of the word that he says he is. And quit playing games. Yes. Huh? Are you with me? Yes. It's total abandonment. Because this is what the Lord is saying. This is what he's saying here in Matthew chapter 7, 23, 21 through 23. This is what he's saying. That's what he's saying. They got all these things that they're coming saying, this is my proofs. This is the proofs that we know you. This is the proofs that we know you. He says, no, it's not the proofs that you know. I don't know you. In other words, he's saying, I don't have fellowship with you. I have no relationship with you. I have no relationship with you. You never quit living your own life. You never quit living in the iniquity, the lawlessness, the anomia, the lawlessness. That's why I open up saying, I don't think that there's any greater expression of lawlessness or iniquity than to pervert God's word and then say it is what he said. Declare it in his name. Because that's right there is the context in which he describes it. So this is the way of God. This is the way of God. I mean, the beautiful door that has been opened up for you and me to know God. To understand, he resists the proud. He resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble. He knows the proud are far off, but the righteous are near unto him. I mean, think about this wonderful privilege. He said, come, hearken unto me, my boy. He says, I'll teach you the ways of the Lord. And he describes it and then ultimately brings to it down to this and says, his ears are open unto the prayers of the righteous. I want that fellowship realm. <laughs> the door has been opened unto me. I want to understand exactly what he's calling me to be when he's telling me to come and learn what this means to wash the feet, to lay down my life, to give myself over to the Holy Ghost, to walk in him, not to preserve my own existence anymore. Because when you start doing that, Father God, the Holy Ghost, and God, the Holy Ghost, and Christ Jesus is able to develop you to take you somewhere beautiful, to take you somewhere glorious, whew, to make something majestic out of your life. <laughs> mm. Oh, to no longer play the safe zone, but go ahead and rise up and become a, a warrior in the kingdom of God who lives for the battle. The, the Lord does say, he does say, everybody who's afraid, go home. Huh? If you're afraid, go home. He just says it. He says, go home. He says, there's too many people here anyways. I don't like to say by a few. I, I, you know, I said, Lord, why does, the few, why does the few have to do the work of the many? Because he loves to save by few. Because he sorts out people. Many are called, but few are chosen. He sorts out the fearful. Those who are preoccupied with their own interests. They just planted a field. They just married a wife. He sorts it out. I can't deliver by them. I can't deliver by them. They don't drink right. I can't deliver by them. You've got to learn how to drink properly of the things of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Today you let God try your heart because if there's things going on in your life that you know is wrong and you're committed to living in them, I'm telling you right, I, right now, I wouldn't want to be in your seat for one minute because in the next minute you could give up the ghost. I'm telling you right now, there are way too many people playing games on God, acting like he's not God, that he's not present. The fool, in his, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Well, how about, the, how about the foolish living of people who believe in God but act like that he doesn't exist? By their character, by their deeds, by their action, by their unwillingness to say, wait a minute, I know he loves me. I know he's committed to forgiving me of all my sins. He'll forgive me continually. I mean, he'll give me, give me forgiveness, forgiveness as much as I need it. But there has to be a commitment to living right and getting it right. Otherwise, there is no forgiveness. And that's why he said, I forgive you as many times as you'll forgive those who trespass against you. And you're not going to do that without the Holy Ghost. And you're not going to do that without a sincere heart. Because I know many people who... who who supposedly are baptized in the Holy Ghost and they still to this day carry unforgiveness in their heart or something that somebody did to them 30 years ago. Hello. <laughs> Is that stuck or what? <laughs> are you listening to, you haven't learned how to wash between the toes yet. <laughs> you haven't learned how to clean the toenails yet. 
of somebody else. I know you're cleaning yours. Praise God. Are you listening to me? You get up by Sunday, yaromongiyataha. Dale mehishi. Hallelujah. I just can't give that way. Oh, yeah, you can. God will liberate you. You'll find yourself enjoying learning how to be the servant of all. You want to be great in the kingdom of God here and later? Start becoming the servant of everybody. Huh? And not some lip service and so, some pretense of false humility. Huh? But the reality of being the slave. I'm living for you. I'm living for you. I exist to make this thing work. Think about God the Holy Ghost. I'm living for you. I'm living for you. I exist to make this thing work. Think about Jesus. I'm living for you. I'm living for you. I exist to make this thing work. He ever lives to make intercession for you and me. He values the whole of his life, and I'm living for you. I'm committed to the work that God has given me to do. I'm not committed to the work down the road. I'm committed to the work that God has given me to do right now. You go to work tomorrow, and you say, you go there, and you spend your eight or ten hours, and you say, and then and your boss comes and says, what? are you doing? Well, I'm working for the company down the street. <laughs> what? You're not doing your job. You're doing somebody else's job. We, wait. Wait. Deception's a cruel thing, isn't it? it makes idiots out of all of us. <laughs> you know, isn't it? Isn't it? I'm going to tweet that one. Deception is a cruel thing. It makes idiots out of all of us. I mean, I get this sort of stuff right out of heaven. I'm telling you, I promise you, I get it right out of heaven. It makes idiots out of all of us. Huh? Learn how to sit in the classroom of men and give all the right answers. But when you're in the class of the Holy Ghost, you don't know the first way. You don't, you don't know the first letter to write for the word. I want you to look with me quickly here in this wonderful challenge, if you would. <laughs> But it's not a challenge, it's a test. It's an examination. And it's not a test or an examination to disqualify us. It's a test or examination to get us right. Because the Lord is just there. He's near a broken and contrite heart. Someone who wants to get it right, I want to get it right, Father. Heaven's mobilized for you. Heaven's mobilized for you. Somebody wants to be self-satisfied, I'm going to continue on in my way. I'm going to continue on in my thinking. I'm going to continue on in my word, what I believe. That's lawlessness. That's lawlessness. That's iniquity. And the iniquity is going to have every kind of fruit. Even if it is as covert and almost undetectable as it is in the Pharisee. Because it's covert and undetectable. It takes a Jesus to see through it. Are you listening to me? Their lawlessness was very covert. Their iniquity very covert. It all looked good. Inside was different. First John chapter 2. Hallelujah. Whew. I get to be here tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just to encourage all, encouraging all of you to hook up with God so he can do mighty things to your life. His purpose to do great things to your life. You choose mediocrity. But don't think I'm going to sit here and babysit, stand here and babysit mediocrity. I'm going to call you to greatness. Amen. You can't get all offended at me because I'm going to call you to greatness. Huh? Amen. Now you listen to me. Yeah. I'm not going to change. Amen. You have to change. Amen. When it comes to declaring God's word. Amen. And I'm speaking on behalf of the Lord there. Amen. You hear me? Yeah. See, he's not changing. He's, he's changing just like the rest of us. You need to get into the program is what you need to do. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. I had a Jewish girl come up the other night in a meeting and she said she wanted to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. She was sneaking around instead of seeking around. <laughs> so I missed you. I prayed for her. I think you were there. <laughs> and I was going down the road, and, uh, down the road, down the line. One girl, I don't know, three girls or so down, three women or so down the line. The devil went out of her, rent her as it went. I didn't pay much attention to it because that's just deliverance. Praise God. That's good news. That's a hallelujah time. Huh? I'm going down there. And I look back and I saw this girl who's supposed to be seeking God. I told her, stand here with your arms, lift towards heaven, just tell him the Lord Jesus says you love him. I saw, looked over and I saw her. She just saw, you know, captivated by that poor girl. Just, ah! You know? I said, hey, 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 hey. Get back to your program. Leave her alone. You need to get back to your program. 
so that the things that God has for you, you can be receiving them. People, you need to manage your program. Your program of relationship with God, and what is it you're going to get right when you're going to start cooperating with God instead of all these other ideas that you've got floating around? What is it you're going to choose His greatness for you instead of choosing your greatness for you? Because people got an idea of what it looks like, what it means for them to be great in the kingdom of God. And it has nothing to do. It doesn't look anything like what God has for you, what it looks like for you to be great in the kingdom of God. Huh? You know, because it's, the scripture says in 2 Timothy, Paul said, the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal. Everyone who knows him departs from iniquity. There's no question about it. Paul's just referring to what Jesus said in John in Matthew chapter 7, verse 23. Everyone who knows him departs from iniquity. Departs from living out their own word, living out their own life. Lawlessness. The mystery of lawlessness. Men in the pride and the self-will of their own existence can defy what God says and say all the time, wherein have we sinned? Wherein have we done wrong? Deception that makes idiots out of all of us. It's a cruel thing. <laughs> I just want, I want Jesus to be revealed. Don't you want Jesus to be revealed? Yes. I want him to be revealed in the majesty of his love. I want him to be revealed in the, in the power of his deliverance to the sick and the diseased and the tormented. But if, we re if I really say that and I really mean that and I really want that, then I'm going to be willing to allow Jesus to live through me. Yes. I'm going to be willing to live his life instead of wait for somebody else to do the job. People want to come and then they're going to judge the meeting based upon how the man of God and a couple of leaders flowed in the anointing, worshipped, moved in the things of the Holy Ghost, moved in things of the Spirit. Well, they sit there as a spectator, a tater. It's an underground vegetable. <laughs> it's fruit that can never be seen. Come on, listen to me. What a bunch of nonsense. What a bunch of game playing. What a bunch of patty cake. Are you listening to me? What a, what a the absence of the body of Christ big time. It's just the fruit. It's the overflow of holding on to your own life. That's all it is. We're not going to beat you up about it. Too bad. I opened up the service Sunday morning. Last Sunday morning, I said, uh, I'm going to pound you today with the Word of God. <laughs> they had announced how many people were actually watching on the web and from different nations. And, but I didn't really pay much attention to it because I already had, I received a download of what God wanted me to deliver, man, and it was coming strong. It didn't matter about what about reputation, what about what people were going to think, how they're going to be fascinated with me, whether I was a good orator or not. <laughs> it's like, here's the Word of the Lord. Hallelujah. What you going to do with it? Get upset? Learn how to just become thick-skinned or soft-hearted and obedient? I'm going to conform to his word. I'm going to live out his way. Huh? I'm not going to get there in front of you. Just try to convince Father of something that you believe that he doesn't believe when you're standing in his presence. Or just try to convince God of something, anything, when you're in his presence. Because I'm going to tell you right now, in his presence, you're going, oh, I'm so sorry, God. All truth is made known. You just revealed, your, Lord, I live for myself. I live the whole time for myself. It was 99% me and 1% thee. Oh, who knows? It was 90% me and 10% thee. If I thought it was ahead of the game. <laughs> reality of it was, it's not a game. It's a life to live. Yeah. The total abandonment. Not to live some, you know, life of affliction and torment and mediocrity, but to live the life of greatness, to live the life of God, to live the life of Jesus Christ, to live the life of the Holy Ghost, to be in charge, to yeah. set people free, to give the uh, divine ability to, to deliver men, to destroy the works of Satan. Yes. What a life! Yes. Yes. What a life! What an empowerment! Amen. Amen. The Lord says, you can't have this in yours too. You're going, what's wrong? What's wrong? Why can't God move? God's going... <laughs> Obey. What's wrong is you're living, not me. 
But so long as, as long as you preserve, you dedicated to preserving your life, it's about to fade away and be remembered no more. Huh? But you begin to live the word, the word endures forever. Yes. You give yourself a total abandonment over to God, and I'm telling you, your name will not be forgotten. It will be remembered forever and especially by him. It will not be blotted out, not in heaven nor in earth. It's true. It's true. You decide. You spend the signs. You can play games with yourself and with God if you want. I'm going to challenge you with word. God's going to demand your life. He demands all of you. <laughs> Some of me. No, all of thee. I surrender half. We ain't going to work. I surrender half. Half to thee, Lord. Half to me. <laughs> it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. Uh, it might be the ortho. You know what? <laughs> it's the orthopraxy. We get all array with a lot of orthopraxy, false doctrine, crazy doctrine. Oh, should we begin to hold ourselves huh, to the same standard that we would hold Others to speaking the word of God, speaking orthodox doctrines, those things clearly revealed and established in the word and believed by God's people. Should we begin to hold that standard to our practice? We'd fall down on our face and reality and truth and God the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth would begin to be able to work and great Holy Ghost conviction would begin to rule our life and then spread across the earth and touch the nation beginning with our own household and family and neighborhoods and communities and cities. But we live in falsehood and lies and deception and wonder why we are fruit, fruitless, why we are barren and unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord. Listen to me. God's purpose is to make us fruitful. Yes. Huh? Yes. Yes. On the level of Jesus' ministry. Yes. Come on now. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm close saying this now. Read the word to you, First John. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray today with all my heart. You hear the word of God, not harden your hearts. You know, I, it, it's, people's not used to hearing me preach, go and minister. And we watch them bust and sob and come under the Holy Ghost conviction. You can sit around and listen to the word of God come forth from the spirit of the Lord and actually become thick skinned against it. Don't do that. Be broken. We had a guy say the other night, he said, the first moment I heard you preach, I was ready to pack up my gear. And I was ready to leave. I was leaving out of here. Religious guy. He was doing the worship. We need to get that worship changed the first night. <laughs> Amen. I'm packing my gear. I'm out of here. Somehow he ended up in the prayer line. <laughs> Beautiful, huh? Don't harden yourself against the Spirit of the Lord. Don't harden yourself against the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Because if you harden in one way, you're going to be hardened in other ways, in every way. And ultimately what happens is your life is a response to God based upon what you believe and on your terms. And that ain't going to get you far. That ain't going to get you far. That ain't going to get you far. You might look like a Pharisee, but you won't look like Jesus. In other words, you might look good on the outside, but you're not going to have any power on the inside. Huh? Are you listening to me? Yes. You might know all the right words and quote all the right, right, right verses, but you have no authority to bring in the lost and set the captive free. Are you listening to me? Father wants to minister an entrance to you into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he's not talking about going over into a realm of heaven. He's talking about the ability to function in the authority of the living God. Hallelujah. And he makes it very clear in that segment of, of, of Scripture in 2 Peter chapter 1 that it's all about us giving ourselves to this realm of living for him, living out his life, displaying his goodness because we give ourselves to his purity, to his faith, to his, 
knowledge to his self-control. If there's anything people need to learn how to do in the Holy Ghost is self-control. You know that? Yeah. How are you ever going to be able to deny yourself if you don't have self-control? Huh? Don't you need the Holy Ghost? Say, I need the Holy, I need the Holy Ghost bad. I need him bad. I need him desperately. I can't live without him. I'm going to learn how to be sensitive to him. I'm going to learn how to yield him. It's hard to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost when you're constantly grieving him. <laughs> He's there to do the word. He's there to do the word. He's there to do the life of Jesus. If you're not willing to do the word, which is the life of Jesus, get it concrete. Get out of the intellectualism. Intellectualism is a demonic realm. Get out of it and start listening to the voice of the Holy Ghost who will speak to the heart and speak to the spirit in truth and bypass all your filters and all your screens. Yeah. Amen. 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 Well, I just thought I'd say it. Leads you right on into what the proper response was. Whew. I'm going to tell you. Somebody said, the meeting's gone long. It needs to go longer. This is about you making heaven. The eternity without God is a long time. Living your life for naught, vain, vanity, vexation of spirit, having no value or meaning when it comes to revealing heaven and the power of Christ Jesus and the power of the cross, that you should not have time for. This, huh? Come on. That's why the church of China is, is so profitable. So prolific, so beautiful. With more than a million people being saved per month with an army that is invincible. They don't want, they don't want short meetings. They want, you know, they want five to ten hour meetings. And we'll be back in a couple hours. Kind of thing. It makes it, they're, they're, they're desperate, they're hungry for God. That's why they walk up to somebody and they immediately give their life to Jesus. There's an anointing there. Hallelujah of living out the life of Jesus instead of always trying to champion your own cause and say it in a way where people can hear it and still like you when you're done. Maybe people will not like you when you're done. You're going to have to be willing to search out maybe a thousand people before you find one. You maybe have to be rejected and, and despised and participate with the sufferings of Jesus Christ to find that one. You may have to make your car a taxi cab to heaven. Be late for church a bit because you can go pick up people for church. You spent Saturday lining up who's coming. You spent the week. You spent 52 weeks like that. You one year like that. Which very few people are willing to do. Very few people want to do. And you go, I guarantee you have one soul by the end of the year. And the only souls I'm counting is the ones that stayed in the meeting. That's it. I'm not talking about you getting somebody else to leave their church, come over here. Talking about somebody who's lost. Why don't you go see if you can say that? Which is, I'm not counting unless they came back. Huh? Neither should you. Come on now. Now, there are some people I know that Tabor's bought a person the other day, got delivered. They told me they would love to be in this church. They'd be committed to this church. But they're from Indiana. That counts. Because they're in church. In church somewhere. That counts. Hallelujah. Come on. It ain't about setting your heart upon the quantities of things that you've got to accomplish and do. It's about setting your heart upon God. And when you do, these are going to be the natural results. Then tell me about all these excuses because I know what. Father beat you to me. I already know the answer. I got the answer book. It's in the question book. <laughs> this isn't the fill in the blanks. This is the answer key yeah. to what's wrong with thee and me. This is the answer key right here. Say, what's going on? Read the answer key. I can't solve the problem. Go and look now, humble thyself, and look at the answer. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just practice joy for a minute. Just flow in joy for a minute. Some of you look like you need to. You're about to drown in the sorrow. <laughs> to give yourself the joy. Whew. 
I was in a meeting the other day and said, everybody just, everybody's been baptized in the Holy Ghost, just go float in the Holy Ghost. And they all just went, there's a rumble, rumble and a roar. I said, now everybody flow in the joy. And they're like, you mean you can do that? You can get happy as quickly? You can flow in the Holy Ghost and joy just like, yeah, you need to practice. You need to give yourself to this joy-filled life, this love-filled life, this peace-filled life. This meekness filled life, this hum humbly, uh, humility filled life, broken filled life, loneliness filled life, <laughs> purity filled life. Yes. Hallelujah. Self control life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Goodness life. I'm trying to get done. I'm almost done. Advertisement for those who want to go. Hang in here. We're. we're, we're we're pleading for your soul. I'm pleading for your soul. Yeah. Who am I pleading with? The devil? No. no. Who am I pleading with? God? No. <laughs> you. Yeah. You. Somebody said, I just want God to come down and just give me the will. <laughs> he already has. He's waiting for you to will. Amen. I want God to come down and do it in me. He has. It's a new covenant. He's waiting for you to cooperate. I mean, you've got to change. You know what the biggest thing you've got to change? That self-justification you've been working with for so many years. That song you've been singing, I'm not so bad. <laughs> compared to everybody else. I'm not so bad. I'm not so bad. I think I'm good. <laughs> I think I'm good. Even though I'm not doing what the Word says, I think I'm good. Because I... I'm not going to... Can we get done with that song? First John chapter 2. My little children, I write unto you that you do not sin. Are you telling me, John? Are you saying that we can live free from sin? What are you saying here? I write unto you, little children, that you do not sin. <laughs> Somebody said, are you telling me that you're saying that we can live a life where we, where we don't sin? I just say, I just say consult 1 John 2, 1. I write unto you, little children, that you do not sin. And if any man sin, listen to that. Whew. Whew. Hallelujah. Listen. And if any man sin, I've empowered you. I've given you the ability. I've written the truth unto you for this. But if you do, if anybody does, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Think about that. Who, who is a propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Through his obedience, through his uh, through his faithfulness through his consecration through his commitment through his death his obedience abounds under many offenses so that you and i don't end up with the same state that adam ended up with because he disobeyed one time hear this love of god so that we're there in his presence served by his love and grace and mercy so we can get it right, because we want to live right. We want to walk in God's ways. Isn't God good? Yes. If you sin, mm. now, he goes on, and hereby we do know that we know him. Here it is. Everybody's got all these ideas. Oh, I know him. I got an agreement. No, no, no. Agreement with the man upstairs. We, we're on good terms. We, we. All these other things that you hear people say, where on earth did you get? You didn't get that out of church. You can get that from the Holy Ghost. We have an understanding. Thank God. You're kidding me. Do you believe that? That's a proper response. That is a proper response to that. Do you believe that? Hereby we know that we know him. <laughs> Hereby we know that we know him. Why? Because we obey him. Because we obey him. Because we obey him. Depart from me. I have no relationship with you. Here's how we know we have a relationship with him. We obey him. Because it's not hard. Because we want to do what's right. 
Huh? That becomes, the Holy Ghost becomes the inspiration for where I say, no, I turn it off. I don't go there. I don't look at it. I don't participate with it. Mm, this fellowship. I don't want anybody to run the risk of standing there on that day before the Lord Jesus Christ and him saying, depart from me, you that work iniquity. I do not know you. Depart from me. I don't know you. I have no fellowship with you. I want you to know that you know him. Huh? And hereby, here is the evidence. Here is the fruits Hmm? Here's the evidence. Here's the fruit. Anybody ever get upset because they sowed you a fruit tree that was supposed to be a plum and it ended up being a persimmon? And you don't even like persimmon. <laughs> you slayed over that thing to bring it forth. It takes three years before you know what the thing is. It was wrong labeled. Persimmon tree. I was expecting plums. Listen, there's fruits. There's evidence. It's here. The fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. Hmm. Love, joy, and peace that goes on when the people around you don't like you, they hate you, they're set against you, they're ready to reject you, they're ready to despitefully use you, and love is busting through you like a river. And you don't even care what anybody thinks because you're caught in heaven, caught up in heaven. Whew. Caught up in heaven. Whew. Come on, man, think about it. Think about it. God's got a different kind of life for you to live than the one you've been living. Yes. He's got a display of his goodness and his mercy in heaven. If you believe that all heaven's being displayed through you, then well done. If you don't, then you need to understand you're missing out on the will of God for your life. And it's time to conform. It's time to conform. I'm conforming. I'm going to give myself to conforming. He that says he knows him, I know in my fellowship with God, we have a relationship, we have an agreement. Or whatever. Or even as able to speak speaks in tongues, but they never go anywhere, never profits them. Why? Because they don't have love. Never develops into anything. Never goes anywhere. Probably was the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Truly probably was the event. But the event never went anywhere because they never were willing to cooperate with God and obey God. And so it profited them nothing. It excelled into nothing. Hmm? Or very small. Or God has to labor, you know, a whole lifetime to get a two minutes of Jesus out of you. No, we're saying no to that. Amen. Amen. Check your treasure. Check your treasure. What is it that you possess right now that you would not give instantly to the Lord all of it if he asked you? Hmm? Anything? Anything? Let me, newsflash. He's asked you. And let me come as a little disappointment to a few of you. <laughs> Press is on. Amen. Oh, I'll give anything, anything the Lord asks. I'll give it. And he asked, and now what are we going to do? Please, Jesus. Can you let go of yourself today? Would you lose your life today so you can live his? Yes. Just go ahead and hallelujah. Put your treasure in heaven so your heart can be there. Just go ahead and put your life in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nothing's more precious nor dear to you than your life. If at gunpoint you were asked to give all that you have, you wouldn't say, no, go ahead and kill me. I want to die with a big, I want to die with a big bank account. Just go ahead and kill me. You would say, no problem. I'll give all that I have. Your life is the most precious thing that you have. Father's looking for you to give your life because when you give your life, all the rest of it is just going to be no problem. It's just free. Just, it's, just, it's just the issue. And I want to, and just to bring you to the point, and we're not trying to dig in your pocketbook. We can do it by ourselves with God's empowerment. We just like to make you a part of it. Because you're going to pass from this life. And Father's going to look at what you participated with, what you did, how you gave, as he commanded, how you responded, as he decreed. We want you to, we want you to die well. Yes. Huh? Amen. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Everybody stand with me. Just to let you know, we're back here tonight at 6 o'clock. Just in case somebody didn't know that the church start, the meeting started at 6. And I, you know, I just want you, to, I want you to bring a heave offering to God. I love the word heave offering. Huh? You got to strain with it. It's a big one. You should bring a heave offering to God. I want you to go home. And I want you to look at your treasure. Some of you need to do this more than others. Because I know what happens. I know, I know the people who hardly have anything and who worship passionately and extravagantly, they, they'll do it. They'll do it. I won't even have food left to eat. Whereas many times the people who really could do it and still have food to eat won't do it. And we just want to help you. We want to, we want to put a spotlight on your life tonight. Just put, put a spotlight on your life today. Sit. Here it is. Hmm? What have you sacrificed for the kingdom anyways? Really? Not on the level of humanity, on the scriptural level of going to the cross, counting the cost, giving it all, offering on an altar your whole being. Because there's no treasure like your life. And when you're really your life's in, all the rest of it is just, it's there. It's true, eh? It's true. So I want you to, I want you just to let God minister to you, touch you. Some of you, I just want you to look at those offering envelopes and say, you know what? I'm going to go into debt for the kingdom of God. I'm going to give X amount of money per month. That's for the church plant, the church building. Let God show you. I'm going to give X amount, of, X amount of money a month for the crusade in Kashmir. Well, I'm going to give X amount of money a month for the crusade in Cuba. I'm going to live to give. I'm going to live. I'm going to go to work, not for me anymore, not for my, all of my bills and all the things and all my thrills. Huh? Some ask me, do you have the savings account? Yes. In heaven. Because as soon as I get any amount of money in there, the Lord says, go ahead, give it. Hallelujah. We just recently had some finances come in and thought, oh, we'll be able to pay this off and then off. And the Lord said, give it. Okay, Pops, no problem. Give it. But he can say that to me because I don't do it. And let me tell you something I've discovered. There is no way that you participate with God in any area of obedience and doing what He has shown us to do that you do not ultimately find yourself living in joy unspeakable, blessings beyond abounding, unbelievable stuff, miracles, greatness. You've got to be kidding me. This is what you're doing, God. Hallelujah. So filled up with him, there is no room for nothing else. So filled with joy, sorrow can't get in. So filled, come on. So filled with God having brought us into a place of fellowship and being in him, the condemnation can even exist. They have these MTC church building pledge cards. So you can pledge to give on a monthly basis. There's a few of you who have just, I don't care. Listen, I'm gonna tell you right now. It doesn't matter what it is, just give something. Go ahead and give something. We want you to be a part of what God's doing. We've had so many radical miracles there. We've had a, a girl, a woman who was healed of advanced Lyme's disease. There is no cure. There is no cure for Lyme's disease. advanced Lyme's disease. She was bedridden. She was healed, was it what, two years ago? What a witness, what an amazing witness to the community. Um, 
so many miracles. Uh, a young girl, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was something radical, it was something extremely painful. Michaela prayed for her and said, in the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. The girl instantly got healed. Michaela has the people of the town. When somebody's sick, they call Michaela, would you please come pray? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whew. Hallelujah. We, got, we have right now ranchers that used to be in church, but they go to church nowhere. They say as soon as the building's up, they're coming. And so I'm just letting you know, I mean, there are great things happening that you get to be a part of. And if you're not a part of it, then you need to tell me why. Why aren't you a part of it? And we can help you walk you through your nonsense. <laughs> you know? Sure. You don't want to miss out on your opportunities in God. Whew. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Living for the kingdom is what it's about. My job is to help you get your treasure in heaven so your heart can be there. Because we want heaven for you. You know, if we wanted hell for your life, we'd just leave you alone. <laughs> we want heaven for your life. We're going to tell you. We're going we're to declare the word of God. I'm not going to speak your own word. We're going to declare the word of God to you. One day I was thinking, you know, Somebody was saying, well, you can give by credit card. And I was thinking, well, you know, people really shouldn't be given by credit card. It's going in debt. The Spirit of the Lord said, why not? They go in debt for everything else. What else are they putting on that credit card? And I, I, it was like many, many years ago, I stood corrected. I'm like, Father, forgive me for my own reasoning. <laughs> You're right. You're always right. <laughs> Thank you for revelation. I just pray today that some of you will go in debt like we have gone in debt. As an example for you, that you'll go in debt for the things of the kingdom. Yeah. Huh? Geneva went in debt and over and again. And uh, just took up the weight of crusades and her and David. What a blessing. Others of you have to some extent. Some of the people that really went in debt to, for crusades and ministries, they're not even here anymore. They're on their turn. Use your turn. It's your turn. I know of one person who took, put their whole, offer, put their whole house in the offering basket. And they didn't stop there. Can you imagine that? Title deed. Here it is. Treasures in heaven. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Wouldn't it be an amazing thing for some of you to get a bill every month that said Kingdom of Heaven? A little, little note from the Lord. Thank you. To put in your pile of 100 bills for yourself. Wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't that be amazing? Where God's people quit just doing for God what's convenient and easy for them. Because if you do it in your offering, you're going to do it in your life and your commitment. I'm just telling you, I know this. God trains us here to not only move in faith, but to be able to receive those things that He's supplying. Man, when you give it all to Him, you're going to be, you're going to be relying on Him. Huh? You want to see signs, wonders, and miracles increase in your life? Get yourself so strapped so far out in commitments for the things of the kingdom that unless a miracle takes place, you will not survive. Just do it. It's fun. Come, enjoy the adventure. It's an exciting. Watch what God, is do, what God has done. Because I've stood in this place so many times, so many times, giving people an opportunity in the kingdom of God to really go someplace. And folks didn't do it. And, watch the, and I watched the Lord just do the miracle and bring it from the ravens and bring it from un, unknown sources. Just here it comes. Because Father's going to do it. 
He gives everybody the opportunity to live in the greatness of his life. He does. Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. And if you think this is the last one, please. And if you think this is the only heave offering you're going to do, my goodness, no. We want you to get a bigger heave. We want you to get, we want to get you into the blessing of God where he, you can actually then be a person that is enjoying a relationship where he is causing you to have plentiful, all sufficiency in all things. This is what we want for you. We want you to break it open before God. Bust it open before the Lord. Hallelujah. And be excited about it. Somebody said, I got drunk in the Holy Ghost and I gave beyond my means and I got home and regretted it. <laughs> that is terrible. That is terrible. Huh? So you lost your heart in love with Jesus in the anointing, went back to self and despised the love and the fellowship. Don't do that. Don't do that. Hallelujah. Don't do that. Huh? Whew. Don't do that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know what I'm doing? I'm standing here, honestly, I'm standing here thinking, how can I give more? What can I give? What? Where can I get some more resources? Lord, I want more resources to give. This is, this is where you get help. I want more resources to get. One thing that touches my body so I'm healthy so I can run harder. So I, I want more resources to give. Mm. He adds years to my life. Lord, I want more resources to give. He develops and increases gift of faith in me. Hmm? Because I go searching in my heart and I'm thinking, not for the realms of the arm of flesh and human ability, but I go searching for the realms of heaven, the heavenly realm, to move in that supernatural gifting of faith. Whew. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. And Father sees that. And when he sees it, I'm going to tell you right now, heaven gets excited about it. And there's an empowerment to receive. There's an empowerment to receive. Perhaps there's some of you standing here today and you've never encountered Christ Jesus. You've, ne you've never come to know personally these things that we're talking about, this great love, this manifest presence, this fellowship, this relationship. Maybe you're watching by the web or by YouTube. Christ Jesus is calling to you right now. He's crying out to you. God the Holy Ghost is crying out to you. He wants you to step in. There's nothing but your will that stands between you and all this realm that Christ Jesus died, rose again, and ascended into heaven for you and I to have. Maybe some of you have just given God half of your life and today you just want to say, no, it's, it's, I'm done with this. I'm surrendering everything. Once again, it just comes down to your will because he's pleading with us. You don't have to talk God into anything. A life-changing, radical event is purposed to happen for you right now. I don't care who you are. It does not matter. If you've been walking with the Lord in every way that you know perfectly, there is an increase for you to have. He's looking for your response. James and Sandy, don't you let up. Don't you let up. Don't you let up. Don't you let up. Do not let up. Do not, do not let up. Do not let up. I know you say, wow, man, we just worked really hard. That was the stress, the strain. Get after it. Go harder. Don't let up. Don't let up. Don't let up. Don't let up. Watch God to begin to multiply what you're doing in other people's hearts so everybody begins in this church to have a heart for the lost and willingness to lay down their life to see others brought into the kingdom. Oh, man, when that begins to happen, whew, 
Hallelujah. Sandy said when, we, when she went to Cuba with me, she said, no, I'm not letting you pay for anything. I'm sowing into this because I want to harvest in Escondido. Somebody knows the ways of God. Somebody knows the ways of God. Hallelujah. Somebody hearing about the heaven, how heaven works. Instead of being so captivated by the way the earth functions. They know how heaven works. Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Power of God falls in you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Everything that has withstood you. Everything that has held you back. Every lie of Satan. Every deception. Every strong hold of the mind. I break it now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command a blessing on you in Jesus' name. I set you free from the realms of darkness and bring you over by the power in the name of Jesus Christ into the realms of his light. I deliver you from Satan and bring you now into the realms of the wonderful kingdom of God so that you can begin to obey him now and lose your life so that he can fill every part of you. Hallelujah. And the beautiful thing of it is, is he invades our life with his life and makes it easy for us to lose ours. Today, if you've not turned your life over to Christ Jesus so that he can come and invade your life, at this very moment, God the Holy Ghost stands ready to work a miracle on your behalf. You need no longer to be oppressed and tormented and live in sickness and disease. Today is the day of salvation. God has come with a miracle work. With a power and authority that is above all other power and authorities. It's the name of His only begotten Son, Jesus. Today, if you will hear His voice, harden not your heart. Turn your life over to Him and watch the power of God spring up like a wellspring. Flow out like a river. Shine like the effulgency of God's divine love and glory as a sun that shines at noonday. Today, today, let the beginning of your life begin to be displayed as a spectacle. Hallelujah. Before angels and before men of those raised up together with him alive from the dead brought out of darkness into his marvelous light. Those who have his authority and his power to tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. Those who have been given all authority to change the world, to bring men out of darkness, to go forth and conquer and to deliver, to set free. Let your life take on the meaning of Jesus this day. If there's anybody standing in this place right now, you've not turned your life over to Jesus as I've described. Today is the day to do it. Right now is the time to do it. We're here to pray with you and for you. See the power of God come upon you and bring the ability that you have to have to live for Him. The change that is absolutely essential if you're ever going to have a fellowship or relationship with Him. Today, right now, at this very moment, sickness and disease must obey the command of our voice because it's His voice speaking through us. Today, God's come to set you free. Today, He stands at the door of your heart knocking, banging, and if anybody will hear, if anybody will respond, He'll come in and fellowship with you. Woo! You'll be sitting at court. Hallelujah. Sitting at court with His majesty. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Not as a peasant either. No, but as one born of his spirit, washed in his blood, created anew in his life, bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, his very blood flowing through your veins. What a life. His glory issuing forth from your pores. Whew. Heaven, heaven. Heaven now. Heaven. I'm talking about a reality of heaven in your life. Heaven. God has heaven for you today. If you'll hear his voice. God has heaven for you today. If you'll hear his voice. Heaven's for you today. 
divine provision, divine life, heaven for you today. The pearl of great price, treasure hid in the field today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Today. Right now. Let there not be one soul in this place that turns a deaf ear to such grace. It turns a deaf ear to such goodness, but every man and every woman and every boy and every girl responding right there where you stand right now. And I invite anybody, the Lord's dealing with you, I want you to come right now. Anybody, God's dealing with you. God, the Holy Ghost is dealing with people in this place. You come. Come now. Let the power of God touch you. Come now, let the power of God touch you. God's dealing with people in this place. Come now, let the power of God touch you. Let the wind of heaven blow through your life. Let the wind of heaven blow through your life. Let the working of His mighty power take hold of you in Jesus' mighty name. Let everything be made new. God wants to make it new. He doesn't want to process it new. He wants to make it new. Let Him make it new. Let God bring the change of the heart that brings the change of the mind, that brings the change of the action, that brings the change of the deed, that brings the change from hell to heaven, from earthly life to His life. Just standing here in his presence. I tell you, God is doing the work. He stands here right now. God is doing the work. Father's doing in the name of Jesus. Now, in Jesus' name. Now. You touch heaven. You touch heaven, you come to Him. You cannot come to Him through me. You have to come to Him yourself. Individually, you cannot come to God through me. You must touch Him now. He will touch you now. There is no one He will turn away. There is no one that He will refuse. No man, no woman, no person puts their trust in Him and is ever disappointed. But it's a trust, it's a trust, it's a faith walk. It's no longer living your own life. It's being willing to live His life. Hallelujah. Go where He's called you to go. You just pour out your heart to Him. You just pour out your heart to Him right here. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Father, we thank you for the blood that you gave to us in your only begotten Son, the means by which sin is cleansed. Father, we thank you for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost so we can now understand how to live your divine life instead of living our life. To be trained by you, O oh God, rather than to be imprisoned by our culture. <laughs> so now in the name of Jesus Christ, change in Jesus' name. From the crown of your head to the souls, in Jesus' mighty name, Masilo Pahara. Satari pe katsambolo patasa to Roma sando roba sike to bomamande i pray. From the crown of your head to the souls, you be beat in Jesus' name. Sat Roma ni alahaira. The power and the strength and divine ability. Hallelujah. To build an altar. Just say, tie me to the altar, O oh God. Mama Sateri. Tie me to the altar, O oh God, as a sacrifice to you. Mayor Sapana de Christ. Marar in the name of the Bahaya. Marar Isar Bandir Stitila. Dokuna Makekro Sitita La Mahoch. Bopramanish. Hallelujah. Ah, Mama Sateri Nai. Ah, Mama Sateri Namanzus. Oh, Jesus, thank you, Father, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for divine empowerment, Father. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 
living by the Spirit. <laughs> living by the Spirit. Living in boldness and living in confidence. Manish to pray. La Romosidea. Take my life and let it be, O oh God. <laughs> A living sacrifice for you. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in the Mosidea. Now in Jesus' name. vast difference between what men know and what God knows. Let God fill you with what He knows. Uh. All flesh is grass and the glory of men is the flower of the field. The glory of men is the flower of the field. The glory of men is the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower thereof fades away. But those who do the will of God, the will of the Lord, abides forever. A will that's realized when we sacrifice our own. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, fire God comes on you. Fire God comes upon you. Heavenly vision. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I command your body to be in perfect order in Jesus' name even as your spirit and your soul responds to divine and perfect order. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Jesus' name, everything begins to show itself to be new. Out of your belly flows. <laughs> Out of your belly flows. Genela Congoso. Genela Congosa. Hallelujah. Genela con Spirito Santo. In numero de Jesus Christ. Ora, Missima. Ora, Mamanda Seya. Ora, Maminki Shikaya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bendecida. I bless you right now in Jesus' name. I brava da casita da nena mambrobo sorriatesta. Ah, baba manana na messi. The life of God fills you. The life of God fills you. The life of God fills you. The blessings of God fill you. The work of grace takes hold of your life. Begins to reign in this place. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. Christ Jesus. In the name of the Holy Ghost. Change. Everything becomes new. Everything becomes new. Everything becomes new. Toro. Hallelujah. Toro. Hallelujah. Everything. Everything becomes new. In Jesus' name. For the crown of your head to your feet. Lord side. For the crown of your head to your feet. Master Terry. From the crown of your head to your feet. From the crown of your head to your feet. Crown of the head, shoulders, and feet. Father, bless the Ha, ha, I bless you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. I bless you right now in the name of Jesus. What beautiful things it is. What beautiful things it is to see when people put their life upon the altar and say, Lord, everything that I am and everything that I have, I give to you. So the most beautiful thing that exists in all God's creation is one of his children standing before him and saying, Lord, everything that I have and everything that I am, I surrender totally to you to live completely for you. I'm yours. Take my life, oh God. Use me. Use me. Saratani. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Right now in Jesus' name. Ratalo Paisteri Mangalati Paya. Right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. You can't live, you can't hang on to your life and have his. So just go ahead and have his. Right now in Jesus' name. Surrender to him. Somebody says, what am I surrendering to? An entirely change, an entirely different kind of life. An entire change of life. And when Father hears within the heart of men a desire to live an entirely different kind of life, Heaven moves in and hell moves out. His love moves in, hate moves out. His goodness moves in, badness moves out. His joy moves in and sadness moves out. Wow, what a blessing. We, we trade in our garbage to receive his treasures. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, break all these strongholds off of you right now in Jesus' name. Reach out and take a hold of the love of God and the goodness that He has for you. Reach out and take it right now. Just reach out and take it right now in Jesus' name. Turn the crown of your head so as your feet to change. 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 When you want Him more than anything else, you can have Him. But as long as he's just something else, one of the many things that you could have, you can't have him. You can't. Because he'll have neither gods alongside him. Just want him with all your heart. Best decision you ever make. Silelo, silelo, miata ini sito ya. Silelo, morista taninayo. Silelo Mokorika. Silelo Masia Toromos. Father's just looking for empty vessels, and there's absolutely nothing more beautiful in all creation as to seeing those who say, I only exist to live for you. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll be what you want me to be. Send me, Lord. I just want to live for you. What a beautiful thing that God brings us to. To be divested of that which belongs to humanity, that which is corruptible. And is ready to ready to vanish away. And he takes that and fills it with his life. 
because we don't want to live our own anymore. Wow. What a wonderful thing that God brings us to. Not many come. I said not many come. Many are called, but few are chosen. Not many will go all the way across the threshold with God. Not many will come to a place that says, Lord, emptied before you, I only live to do your will. All that I am and all that I have and all that I'll ever be is yours from this day forward. Empty vessels. And though few respond, yet God continues to plead. Yet God continues to call. Yet God continues to work and convince us of truth because of His mercy and His love. Because he wants us to trade in all our garbage for his treasure. All the dimensions of our life for his life. All our goals and dreams and visions of what we can be. It's only temporal and perishes with the using. To ultimately step into all that he's purposed us. To have and to be in him. Live his life stood our own, of our own. And with such consecration, with such decision of the heart, Father causes his fire to fall. I know my wife, she came to the point where she's like, Lord, I'm happy just to be married to you. To not have a husband, to not have a family, just to be married to you. But we just came to, every one of us came to a point with, Lord, I'm just, I don't need anything. I don't want my own life. I don't. And then the Lord begins to give us things that now they come into the proper place because he's first. We don't want it for us. Praise God for it, because now we brought it. God's able to use us, bring four champions into the kingdom, and they're multiplying every day. Four turned into six, and six turned into eight. Eight's turned into 11. Plus. Besides all the sons and the daughters after the spirit that the Lord has given us throughout the world now and it's multiplying every day. All flesh is grass. All that you are is grass. It's like grass. All that you boast in and all that you love and all that you like is grass. It says grass. And all the glory, all the things that you may boast of. It's like a flower. It's pretty. It's attractive. But it withers. Perishes. It's forgotten forever. I said forgotten forever. To be remembered no more. But everyone who does the will of the Father... Just imagine this life that Father has given us an opportunity to step into. Oh, that I could bre breach your darkness. Bust through your walls of hindrance. It has sheltered you behind its prison doors. And kept you from living this amazing life. Father's just looking for people today, right here, right now. He says, I hold on to nothing else. I hold on to nothing now. I hold on to nothing. No more my wants, no more my desires, no more living for me anymore. God send me, I'm ready to go. Here I am. When Father gets you to that point, now, now we, he's got you to a place where he can develop you. 
Now he's got you to a place where he can begin to develop faith in you. Oh, that that would have been the first day. The second day, the third day, and every day since you called upon the name of the Lord. That would have been the life. But nonetheless, Father still has the invitation today. The most beautiful thing is a complete and yielded and surrendered heart to him. That says, I hold on to nothing. I let go of all of my treasures. I take all that I have and I sell it and I give it to the poor. And I understand... Father is fundamentally talking about the spiritual poor for the gospel is to the poor, not to the financially poor, spiritually poor. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To take all that I have, sell it and give it to the kingdom so that the lost may be reached. It's absolutely the context. Absolutely the context. And we'll take care of the widows and the orphans while we're doing it. Amen. And see them raised up in the kingdom and see them transformed by the power of God. Because what does it matter if you give somebody another meal to eat and a house to live in for them to die and go to hell and spend eternity in a place called the lake of fire? Oh, when we begin to understand it, when we begin to believe it, when we begin to sober up, I was so blessed. I was so blessed by you taking that two minute clip and putting it on. That's powerful. You preached the biggest audience of anybody this past week. Do you know that? What is it, 4,000 people has viewed that? You preached to the biggest audience of anybody this week. I mean, just, just understand, all around you, there are things, there are opportunities all around you. There are opportunities to serve that you just pass them by, pass them by, by. Why? Occupied with your own life. Stop it. Today, God's looking for some surrendered lives of people who give themselves to the, the, the myriad of opportunities to surround you right now, right where you're sitting. You don't need to go across the town. You don't need to go to another nation. 4,000 people have viewed that. It was radical too. If you haven't seen it, you ought to see it. Because it's that message where I said, in the first three seconds in hell, your jaw will be dislocated from your screams. Think about it. It's, people are not hearing the reality of what's going on, the choices that they're making. There's so much that God would do through you. There's so much He's made available to you. So much of His riches and more. You've got to take the riches that have already been afforded you and begin to value them and spend them properly. And he will give you more. But if you're unfaithful in the small things, if you're unfaithful with mammon, with money, with the finances that you have, God's not going to commit to you the true riches. Won't happen. If you're always spending the best on you, the bigger part for you, understand it. Father says no. He says no. He says Flat out, no, no. But he says, if you to be faithful with a few things, you make you ruler over many. You just obey God with what you have. Can't you imagine seeing a church where everybody in that place is just committed and surrendered to God and says, oh Lord, not my way, but yours, not my will, but yours. And it's just real, it is truth, that they could be plucked up at that moment and set in the Himalayas or in the, the jungles of Laos or wherever. And they'd just be happy because there's that kind of consecration. There's that kind of consecration that's like, oh Lord, everything that I have is yours, where they would go home and just take everything that they have, throw it in the kingdom. That kind of consecration, that kind of commitment. Can you imagine what a church would be like then? Oh, how beautiful that was. Those stars don't shine. much in the earth today those stars don't shine much in the earth today for every man is set to do his own will to do it his own way and within it there's every evil thing the gossip the slander the backbiting the sense of abuse the abs the ab abdication of authority no sir we're not going to stand around and do that we're calling every man christ jesus calling every man to come, hearken to his voice. That from this day forward, whatever God has given you and whatever influence he's given you, whatever divine ability you have, beginning with the light that he's given you in himself, it's all for him. It's all for him. We're just gathering everything we can get. We're just gathering it together. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We're just gathering it together. gathering it together, giving it to him. 
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's how the gift of faith comes. That's how the working of miracles comes. Hallelujah. That's seeking God according to the proper due order. Amen. What do you want the Lord Jesus to do for you? You do. Slit your hands towards heaven right now. La prostedea kaya. Fire God comes on you right now. Right out of your belly flows. Miristitana. Right out of your belly flows. Put your hands right there on your belly. Right out of your belly flows. These rivers of the Holy Ghost. Swell spring springing. This life of God flowing. To begin to burn bright with the presence of the Lord and with the expressions of His divine utterance. To begin to burn bright with the consecration of your will and of your life in the Him. To bring forth many souls into the kingdom to see the glory and the power of the living God be made manifest through your working, through your actions, through your thinking, through your speech. Hallelujah. So just receive right now. Sudahat. Sudahate. Right out of your belly flows. Yeah. These rippers of the Holy Ghost. Ha ha ha. Men just let your hands dear towards him and just worship him because he loves you so much. Ha 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 <laughs> not a better life than living for Jesus. Not a better life. Not a better. Not a better one. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift those hands. You just keep worshiping Him. Don't you worry about nothing. Don't you worry about nothing. Right now, Jesus, don't you worry about nothing. I just break all the self-consciousness off of you and the concern. Huh? Ain't nobody looking but Jesus. Ain't nobody can even see him in the Lord. He hid away uh, in his presence and he likes what he's looking at. Hallelujah. <laughs> he likes what he's seeing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Mondea Satya. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, I commend to every part of every part of your body and part of your feet made whole. Well, find a bunch of people around you, hug them, tell them that you Love them, bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and live the life of God. Be empowered to live His life. Go ahead and take responsible for every lost person, every sick and diseased person. Go ahead and take up the mantle and the torch to go set them free. Hallelujah. Must it to you. Who? Lord Jesus, bless the baby. Father, I thank you for your blessing right here upon baby. In the name of Jesus, blessed all the days of her life because mama's going to keep her in the iglesia. Hallelujah. Blessed spirit, soul, and body in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I paint her with the blood of Jesus right now. The protection of the Holy Ghost right now. Hallelujah. To live out the life in the kingdom of God. This best life going. Hallelujah. Not the American life, the kingdom of God life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your love and for your great salvation. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your love. Go. 
Gur ma manda la nene mengeli nene mando robor de bivili anano. Holy is the Lord. Mamma manea. Ah, se la vedi chista la di fra tanto la leve. Zeri ma banda la di chista la di stra. Ne rendere de bechista li ando rocco ti alana ma masa. Ma lande le vesti chi nanda bo rusta. Ma lando la deve vive che disti. Get me on. Point production is Buoyant production. 